We are discussing solutions for fixing red stars, blitz, real time arena, and a lot more of your questions from the Discord server guys on this special Tuesday edition of the Monday Mailbag. And if you're ready for it, find that like button and you know what to do. Let's go smash it! Valley flying. Oh, hello, my good friends and Valley Maniacs. I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel for this special Taco Tuesday edition of the Monday Mailbag, guys. Answering your questions from the Discord server. And if you want your question potentially featured on an upcoming episode of the Monday Mailbag, guys, yes, normally they happen on Mondays, but we had a special roundtable interview, finally had all of our schedules aligned, was able to do that with OMG and Reminex. So check out yesterday's video for some good discussion on some changes that we want to see and some potential solutions for all those changes in that video, guys. And without further ado, oh, actually, before we get to the mailbag, subscribe hit that uh, hit that notification bell as well for more great marvel strike force content but now now let's do it now let's go get to the mailbag guys first question of the week hey valley fine love your youtube channel thank you brother very entertaining always full of good info some of your recent videos have dealt with current issues of the game and some solutions i've thought of one while i was playing isn't it time for blitz milestones to go further uh, most players who've been playing for a while knock them out at all one round these days. Couldn't they move these from 20 to 30 or 40? Some of these uh, resources like training mats and such been there before. I like I like including training mats in these milestones. Now, not just talking about um, the, the ranking rewards and solutions. I think adding more milestones is a key. Having more uh, players get to higher levels and get more shards for characters and other resources like these training mats, like you mentioned. It also make it less arduous to blitz more since there would be more immediate rewards. I I, I do like that. The, the immediate rewards, those rewards on day one, one rotation, like you said, all those blitz rotations are done. So I think this is another solution that they can add into uh, a lot of the other ideas of blitz blitz this could also be shortened to two days instead of three to get more variety in characters in the rotation all again helping new players unlock more characters faster unrelated idea but i think ant-man should have antony as a summon it would be fun it would be fun i don't know if they could add it at this point i you know there's a lot of development hours going into that i don't know if they could recoup that with uh, selling anything related to ant-man but it would be a cool idea if uh if they could have them hours blitz is shortened to two days instead of three uh, that could be good, although I do like these kind of war machine blitzes where I can abstain from blitz a little bit. But uh, yeah, a lot of good ideas. I think it can work. I also like uh, some of the ideas that we discussed yesterday about multiple blitzes going on at the same time. And then obviously the big one that everybody's been discussing for a long time is those blitz shards. But yeah, I, I think uh, increasing the milestones would be another great uh, addition to all these solutions that we've already been discussing, brother. Uh, Valley, big smash it from Indiana. Been watching you since uh, started last March. You're the first content creator I watched. Follow you since your key reason why. 11 months with 5.5 uh, TCP million C TCP. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for watching and all of your support. Uh, anyway, with a recent outcry and a change in the game, a lot of complaints about red stars. I have an idea. Want your thoughts? This is why I posted on Reddit. Here's how to fix red stars, in my opinion. This stand your red star orb and the red star orb drop in the middle then right side have promotion credits so green would drop one silver promotion credit a blue drop would have three silver promotion credits a purple drop would have a gold and a gold drop would have five a uh, problem solve it makes it more red stars more valuable which gives people interest in buying the red star offers the game gets competitive we get uh, we get have we get competitive and fun more quickly and the competitor uh, the company can make money easy solution i do like this uh any way that they could add more promotion credits silver gold i even kind of like that idea from yesterday about just doing away with all the promotion uh, credit levels the silvers and golds just make one promotion credits different amount for every character i, I kind of like that idea but yeah definitely we need more uh adjacency in our roster uh, some more control a uh, control which characters we are able to upgrade more promotion credits is a great idea towards that solution uh there's so many great ideas out there that scopely can implement uh but it, it was very surprising and very disappointing that they did not even mention red stars in that blog post which i think is the biggest area of pain in the game for 
a lot of players at least at least for me it's 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 it, it doesn't make it fun because you can't really choose the way you progress your roster uh have you ever heard of carl morangathu aka flag smasher he's a lesser known villain of captain america uh before this question no i have not heard of him uh yeah maybe maybe he will come to your game at some point i think there's a lot of other characters that uh are more popular they can make more money with than this character but uh maybe 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 as like a background character coming to the game I, I, I don't know if that was your question though but uh yes anyway uh greetings from minnesota with punisher daredevil leaving the defenders everyone keeps talking about a heroes for hire team that would be a cool team but do you think it's possible they could make a new avengers team uh, the roster that started off with Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Captain Marvel, The Thing, Mockingbird. This would be a very good tag to have in the game and having these characters have synergy because Luke Cage, Jessica, jo Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, homeless now that Daredevil and Punisher moved off to other teams. Spider-Man, homeless. Wolverine, homeless. Captain Marvel is a great character to work on a lot of different teams. It would benefit this team if she get that tag. The Thing uh, gives a little more usability in the Fantastic Four because we got uh, six characters that work with the Fantastic Four now with uh, Namor and uh, I guess seven if you count Doctor Doom with Namor, Doctor Doom, and She-Hulk that's worked with the original Fantastic Four. Mockingbird not in the game yet. I do remember her in Future Fight though, so could be a could be a cool character to add to this team but yeah I, I would like this tag just because all those characters that you mentioned or a lot of them Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Spider-Man, Wolverine all homeless right now uh greetings from California thanks again for answering my question in the past my question this week is based on your Black Order experience I personally invested heavily in the team but I need to know your opinion of some of the T4 uh, final T4 abilities want to know how you feel about Proxima special ultimate or passive out of those i think i like the passive best because uh, it gives not just her 10 percent more focus it gives that to the entire team and i like those passives that are kind of like leadership abilities that give bonuses to the entire team not just that one character so i think the best of the bunch is that passive of proxima midnight her ultimate is also very good you're getting more damage but you're also getting a uh, 25 more speed bar reduction which is also good uh call i have not done his special it's a little extra health i've done his ultimate gives him more damage i think both of those are luxury picks i think the best one of the bunch is going to be that proxima passive and then uh i guess depending what you need the ultimate i think uh, for proxima would be after that the special alt of call and then the special proxima i think all of those are luxury picks but yeah good 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 team yeah and uh yes invest heavily in the t4s because yeah they're they're they're, they're a really good team and dominate pretty much everywhere you use them oh long question all right greetings cold greetings from wisconsin brother love your youtube channel especially the is it worth it with little a a little g i always watch those videos when i kids and love following along anyway talk to time to talk business all right what do you think about the 24-hour blitzes as a solution to fix our bottlenecks i uh, kind of like the last question with the 48-hour blitzes the 24-hour blitzes um doesn't really give a break from blitzing though i i do like these war machine blitzes where i get a break uh other than that uh it does it does do a few good things sunday you mentioned red star premium gold fragment blitzes so three blitzes going on uh purple blue and gear 14 and gear 15 frag or blitzes that that would be good i think the gear 14 and gear 15 would be a little generous of scopely at this point uh they did say in the bo uh, the blog post that they wanted to keep those orange bottlenecks going training mat silver gold promotion and silver promotion credits oh those tuesday blitzes you got three of them uh three very very coveted blitzes on the same day <laughs> uh wednesday you got the old characters like killmonger cable and the war machine that we have going on right now thursday through sunday new character releases so uh i i, I like the outside of the box thinking the 24 hour blitzes uh can be good i don't know if we need three like awesome blitzes like for training mats silver and gold or i guess uh silver and gold would be different i don't, I don't know maybe but yeah th this could be good but it also makes us need to blitz a lot and if we have real-time arena right now and and we're trying to get milestones for that i know it's a very crappy game mode but the mile the rewards in that are pretty good so if you're trying to grind that grinding blitzes grinding wars it could be it could be a lot i know we got to go through that anyway on uh, the the new character blitzes but yeah solve bottleneck issues definitely would 
Scopely loves us opening the game. This gives us a good reason to open the game. Yeah, that's that's kind of the reason I'm pushing back on it. But Scopely would give them the metrics that they want of always logging into the game, playing the game, allows players and uh, to get new uh, shards for older characters. I, I think they do that already, but I would like to have something like uh, old characters and new characters running concurrently. So uh, Iceman and I don't know, Killmonger or someone like that. It would be cool and those maybe not those exact characters but something off the top of my head uh i do like the idea that remedic suggested of having like a unlock character like a negasonic or someone that's decent uh not not a great character but is an important unlock for some other characters uh, allows new players to get shards uh brings back enjoyment to the game mode we've written off I, I i don't know if blitzing more would give it more enjoyment but uh, I, I, I think there's some other solutions, but I, I do like the outside of the box uh, thinking here. Only problem with the less rewards for the effort. So it does have to match like top 100 gets a uh, hundred ten thousand gold orb fragments. And then, all right. So yeah, this is a good, this is a good, uh, what is that? Uh, good, uh, idea. I'm not sure if a, in implementation, it would work just because of all the grinding that it would allow, but, uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this would be good. Uh, anyway, Hulk smash from the Hawkeye State hearing and reading all the rants about red stars compelled me to say uh, That I'm mostly free to play players. I like them. I understand players want to control their progression, but RNG is fun, too uh, I do I, this game has elements of both. I don't I don't think we need more uh, RNG with the red stars. I have three red star characters that two were from orbs. Well, well, yeah, that's better than a lot of people and especially if you are uh, Completely free to play and now I know why you like the red stars uh, the excitement of the polo is more than I've gotten from anything else in the game. Yeah, getting getting that uh, seeing that gold when you draw, uh, unlock a red star and then being so excited and then finding out what character is like, oh, it's not the character that I wanted. But yeah, it's it's a massive high and a massive low. But sometimes it's massive high and a massive high. That's it. I do think promotion credits should be more obtainable. But the red stars are far from the catastrophe that super competitive players make it out to be. Just like Scopely has lost uh, touch with the players. I think the highly competitive community loses touch with the little guys sometimes, but moving on, I, I think I think that's kind of true, you know, because for me, I speak from my personal experience and the experience that I get from these questions and from the community and the live streams. But that's that's the only experiences I have to draw from. So um, usually, I mean, not totally, but usually it's competitive people that are commenting on the videos and are, and are commenting on live streams. So that's that's mainly the experience that I have. But uh, you're definitely right there's there's definitely a large player base that uh is not as competitive as a lot of the content creators out there uh but mo but moving on i have an idea for improving rta that i haven't heard discussed why not change the achievements to be win based rather than using she hulk uh, three times you have to win three matches with her instead this could be creative too and have combos like win five matches with falcon and winter soldier it did take a while to get winnable matchups with the inconsistent matchmaking it also causes more quitting now the the issue i would see here is let's say you didn't build up your sheet you have so many characters to build up for other game modes i don't know if uh, building up a character just being able to win in real time arena would be would be fun so uh if, if they did something like balanced where you could have uh, equal power of this so it's just about testing your skills in a game testing out your abilities then it'd be cool but i mean there's there's so much problems with real-time arena i could see how that doesn't work as well because the real-time arena they want us to build up our rosters if it's all balanced then that doesn't work for scopely so um yeah i mean there's real-time arena just needs some tweaking they needed a lot of play testing uh it, it there's no play testing for real-time arena so I, I think it needed a lot iron out the kinks i mean i think it was about a year of play testing before iso 8 was released i think that's what real-time arena needs taking some ideas implementing them seeing which one works which ones don't but uh that that wasn't really done at the giving feedback from the players maybe at the devs level with uh, within themselves but the players as far as i know were not able to test out real-time arena before it was uh, implemented and uh no no feedback was given or taken uh valley Vine. greetings from bavaria germany i've been watching your contest since the beginning and i've not missed one thank you brother dedication i love it uh but today is the first time i'm asking for more insight like most players i play the game because i love marvel and i'm addicted to collecting i think uh that's that's the draw of these hero collector games because you're collecting characters that you like i don't like the way they've been giving us 
less and less possibilities to successfully theory craft strong full teams uh right now i don't know where to go with mutants i brought sinister to gear four, uh, 15 for dark dimension 4 and thought about doing the same with emma since she's so strong meta and everyone else is doing it but i guess i could have the need for phoenix and the legendary nodes because of what she did in dd3 uh, and probably in dd4 now now i don't know where the question is going but just remember that phoenix you're not going to need her until you get to the legendary section of dark dimension 4 so i would suggest a character like a global character like emma before a character like phoenix although emma is very expensive in terms of these mini the gear 15 mini unique so uh that that i didn't do emma because of that cost but she's a great character if you have the pieces for her then yes um but slightly invested in axman now i'm asking myself and you obviously how to manage mutant resources i have an axman team for doom raids one day and then hope i don't cry because i have mutant gear now unless for x factor the gear 15 crunch is not fun anymore how will I know what, what I need in a year, but you have to start collecting materials. All right, so uh, what I would focus on right now, just getting the characters that you need for Dark Dimension 4. Uh, you could work on teams like Axemen for Doom Raids and stuff in the background, but if you're not going to use them, uh, if your alliance is not going to do that within the next few weeks or so, then I, it probably is not a good idea to start working on them and work on something that you're going to benefit you and your roster in the short term which I think sounding from your question, it, it seems like it's Dark Dimension 4. So for that, I would focus on my Dark Dimension 4 characters. And then once your alliance knows they're going to do Doom Raids, then, you know, hopefully you get like a week or two notice. You can start building up those teams and then start prepping for that. Uh, X Factor, the dad bros are really good. Uh, I heard together they're very good in Dark Dimension 4. I'm working on Long Shot alone. I don't know how he's going to do as a as a non dad bro character but just uh, with the rest of the cosmic characters but uh yeah I, I would focus on dark dimension four if i were you brother and then focus on the rest later uh i need a review on my plan for dd3 going forward currently have ma shuri phoenix colossus hella min symbiote spider-man i'm currently on mission seven which is uh, the global third one i plan on taking black bolt for another cosmic after i plan on that i've taken shadowlands for city but i want to know in your opinion what should i take moon knight or white tiger hope to help uh, hope it helps brother well uh considering they're not even a game yet and we haven't had some actual play testing it's kind of hard to make a real determination i think on paper both of their kits look very good moon knight has a lot of a uh, crit chance white tiger does a lot of damage uh and looking at your city characters all you have right now is symbiote spider-man uh i think the guarantee choice i don't know if you have anti-venom unlocked but if you have anti-venom unlocked i'd probably go anti-venom before white tiger and moon knight and then uh maybe a character like punisher if you have a lot of extra skill gear because he does give city heroes more damage 10 percent extra damage if you want to bring in the symbiote triumphant you have enough alien spores bring in carnage but i think i think i'd rather go symbiotes if i were you rather than moon knight or white tiger i'd, I'd rather stick to the characters that i know are going to work in the raids have a lot of use out after dark dimension 4 or dark dimension 3 rather than a two characters that will give me benefits potentially in war on offense if i build with the rest of the team so i would go that direction if you're really stuck on going moon knight or white tiger i guess it's going to be the one that you end up getting more red stars on but uh yeah team teams look decent and as far as let me look at your uh cosmic lanes right yeah ma hella black bolt would be good in there as well so yeah I, th I think you're good as far as your runs there but yeah city and cosmic is where you need black bolt is a good plan but uh yeah look i i probably would look other places than uh white tiger and moon knight for uh dark dimension three brother uh next question valley this is my first posting thanks for all the info and advice i've been playing since launch and mostly free to play i know there's some hate with the game right now due to multiple bottlenecks a suggestion i have for a currency system like iso 8 to be able to exchange upgrade gear to the next level i.e uh 50 green gear for one blue gear 50 blue for one purple and so on i think this would help older players use up gear that's collecting dust newer players get the high level faster this would be awesome uh whether scopely would implement something like this whether they could uh monetize all the man hours that would go into implementing a system like this uh is the question though but yeah if they implemented something like this i think all the or most of the players i know i would be happy but i think most players would also be happy with this but it's just the question of where what what is the benefit for them to do that? i guess i guess making the players happy gives them some benefit in long term at least the more long-term sales but uh short term I, I i i'm not sure if they're thinking that way so uh but I, I do like this idea hopefully it will be implemented brother 
uh hey Bali, what do you think of this idea for bottleneck solution new raids oh uh in, in addition to the raids we have or instead of the raids we have scope you should create a red star raid gold raid that way alliance could decide what raid they do based on the progress they need uh yeah could 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 be a good good idea uh in, in implementation i know on paper it, it looks pretty good I'm, I'm just saying trying to think of what the ramifications are um not getting red stars or not getting gold and seeing what and if if you got different members of the alliance that deem different things how do you guys vote and i guess you would vote on it but uh would allow players to use a variety of teams need silver promo credits red star promo credits then do that do a gold you know what instead of instead of more raids i think i would just like to have them add some of these resources promotion credits gold promotion credits um other things in in the current raids just up the rewards maybe they talked about the milestone rewards adding those and upping those for the uh raid season rewards uh, in the blog posts so that that could be an idea as well but maybe uh adding training mats uh promotion credits for every node that you do in a raid i don't think a silver promotion credit per node would totally break the game considering the amount of characters that we're getting on a monthly basis and how random red stars are i, th I think that would be a good thing so instead of new raids i would just like raids that uh reward a lot of this stuff anyway per node or for the milestones that that would be my preference though but um yeah well, well i don't know it seems like from the conversations that i've had with uh cerebro it seems like raids are kind of difficult to for them to develop and take a lot of man hours so uh yeah i think it's more likely to get more rewards and i think i would prefer more rewards brother uh valley i hope you're doing well just a thought the devs spend i'll give them the benefit of the doubt they spend a couple weeks to create these storylines for character events and then they're gone forever i think i've only had a couple reran for a limited time yeah there, i know the ant-man and wasp has been there a few times there may be a few others that i'm not remembering off the top of my head but once in a while they do bring these events back it does seem like a shame that new players won't have a chance to experience those some well-written storylines here's a fix for that scopely could rerun these events just give the character charge for hard difficulty it's hard it's going to be ultimate food for veterans but a nice way that new players can catch up these campaigns and be re recycled i don't know why they i don't know why this is a suggestion this is something that should be like automatic once an event is there uh it comes back for new players i i don't know why they're not doing this uh same thing with the legendaries as well you know after you unlock that seven legend seven star legendary you're not going to see it ever pop up in your game again i would like to go and play this obviously not for wars but it would be nice to go back and play some of these stages just to test it out test out if there's if there's uh other other combinations and stuff that work i know we're kind of limited with the choices that we have for some of these uh legendaries because there's only five but there's other legendaries that have an abundance of characters that we could use to unlock that legendary and it would be nice to go back even though we've passed it just for some uh just for some experimentation uh why waste the time creating this if they've seen only one time forgotten they could be reworks so the orbs aren't in them just the shards maybe throwing some training mats on the nose yeah just something something it'd be cool I, I i know uh the game that this game that marvel strike force gets compared to so often star wars galaxy of heroes has that kind of system that when these legendary events come back it could go to like an even harder version just for some gold rewards or some training mat rewards i would like to see like a level eight for these uh for the legendary events and for these uh other uh limited time events an extra level and just for some good rewards so players that have been playing for a while can can experience these and get excited when these uh events come back because as of right now when when phoenix is coming back or nick or not nick fury but uh who's coming back a uh, black bolt is coming back there's there's nothing that we see nothing we could do with these so there's no excitement once you've already locked these I would like to see something like that uh for these events returning and and, and obviously those uh those limited time events returning as well especially for newer players uh valley hope all is well i'm wondering what are your thoughts about premium and mega orbs would you rather get a lot of orbs with current contents or would you rather get a fewer orbs with actual premium content so i'd rather I actually get uh, fewer orbs with good content because right now i just opened a mega orb last night and i was like oh man i hope this is good i hope it's not crap instead of being excited like oh i got a mega orb i'm gonna get something good it's like oh man i hope this is not bad and it ended up being bad so it's, it's really not exciting the premium orbs most of those are crap i would rather have them take out some of these characters make it more premium make these mega orbs more mega and that way i get excited when i get these right now uh not 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 super exciting because most of the time it's gonna be crap once in a while it's great but uh personally i'd rather have better better orbs and fewer of them 
Uh, hey, Valley, would you uh, happen to have any current information on the MSF Legendary event schedule? Thanks. No, I mean, we, we know from the blog post that it appears that Black Bolt is going to be the next legendary character. But as we've seen with Nick Fury, Star-Lord, even if it's detailed in the blog post that they're coming back, it uh, may not happen. So as of right now, it, it looks like uh, Black Bolt is the next legendary character. But who knows? This, this legendary schedule doesn't look like it's a schedule anymore. It's just let's look at these random legendary uh, events that pop up is what it seems, brother. Uh, hello from Louisville again. Today we're having an ice storm. Hey, today in Texas, we're also having an ice storm. My goodness, snowing all over Texas right now. And uh, unfortunately, I apologize for everybody on the live stream, but uh, was not able to live stream this morning because our internet is down. So hopefully I'm able to upload this video later today. Uh, spent a considerable amount of time on my Black Order and Symbol teams up to gear 14. What are the other top meta teams that would be good to work on to help boost in raids? Ultimus uh, 7.3, Greek 2. Sometimes I struggle on the last four nodes. Perhaps you could do a top uh, 10 raid teams. That, that would be a good uh, video to do. But uh, as far as the top raid teams, I think the Black Order and Black Order hybrids are the best ones. So Black Order works. And then the team that I use a lot in Ultima 7.5 uh, when my symbiotes die. And obviously Axemen, uh, they're, they're a great raid team. But uh, Ebony Mob, Thanos, Black Bolt, Minerva, and Ultron. That team works very well. I know some people used to use different characters instead of Ultron. That was that was probably the best team before the symbiotes came out. And I still use them. I know some people replaced uh, Ultron with Hela and a few other characters, but that team works. And then and then you got the symbiotes that are very good. You have it, you're invested in them already. You have a symbiote hybrid with Anti-Venom, Symbiote Spider-Man, and Carnage. And then you got Black Bolt and Yo-Yo. That team works very well as well. And then obviously the Axemen. Those are the three teams I use. Uh, but maybe maybe down the road, a top 10 video of the raid teams would be uh, would be something something good. Because I know Ghost is not supposed to be in uh, the raids. It's supposed to be a Dark Dimension character. But she is also very good in the raids as well. So uh, a lot of combos. I don't know if there's a particular team. But just characters and combination of characters that seem to work very well in the raids uh valley flying should i continue uh, to keep beast on my uncanny x-men team since i don't have jubilees well the best version of that uncanny x-men team is gonna have beast so if you're not using that x-men team you don't have jubilee then yes i probably would be keeping beast on my uncanny x-men team but uh you're gonna but once you get jubilee and the rest of the x-men uh beast is gonna go to that team you're gonna have a weaker uncanny x-men team but you're also gonna have two teams that are very very good one for raids and just the all-around team in the uncanny x-men uh not 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 ver not raid because of the death of phoenix but um yeah you're gonna have two good teams and uh, uncanny x-men once beast gets off that is not gonna be as good as with beast uh sup valley been a while since we talked see if we can go six for six on the questions i guess we are six for six brother all right uh but if i'm first uh but first i'm gonna break up my defenders for white tiger i'd rather make spider-man white tiger iron fist luke cage just need nova to make the ultimate spidey team like the cartoon yeah uh any any kind of team that would give some homeless characters a team or even if it's like theory crafting like we used to do back in the day you know just give more uh versatility to a lot of characters make them use them all different teams would be cool all right plug in moon knight until nova but my question do you think we'll ever see the famous x factor havoc polaris multiple man strong guy feral uh i think there's a lot of other mutants that are probably more popular probably more marketable that we may see first uh, as far as X Factor, we don't know what the other three characters are going to be. We got Longshot Shatterstar in there. And then we see this in game message every so often about Shatterstar and Richter. So I think, as far as X Factor, Richter might be one of the characters. Who the other two might be? Uh, it could be Havoc, Polaris, Multiple Man, Strong Guy, or Pharaoh. Could be one of these characters or some other mutant. But uh, I, I think eventually we could see some of these characters. I think the. The most popular out of these is probably Havoc. So uh, if I were to guess one of them, I think Havoc would be the most popular and the most likely to come to the game. But man, I, I never would have guessed uh, some of these other weird characters, Anti-Venom, Scream coming to the game and being so popular. So who knows? Maybe maybe some of these guys, but uh, I, I think anything is, is possible. But I think a lot of what the decision goes into which characters being released uh, has to do with the market decision. If they think they're going to make money with this character or not. Uh, yo, Valley Fine, as a free-to-play player in the game, mid-game, around 4 million TCP, starting to get ready for Dark Dimension 3, I've always opened my Red Star Orbs, 
as often as I get them off chance that I get an upgrade to somebody that could be useful but I've been running into the problem where I'm uh, hardly getting any red stars on any new characters even though it'll be a while till I get characters like Jubilee and her team I still would like to have some red stars on them before I get there so my question is as a free to play do you suggest I continue my open my red star orbs as I get them or do you think I should save as many as I can until the newest character drop rates are boosted and continue that cycle so uh I spend money in this game but I I there's there's been months very early on in the game that I would not spend and one of the things I, that I would do with red stars is just hold them hold them until the new character gets released uh you're getting that extra 15 percent drop right with a new character and eventually you know hopefully you get enough of the supply that you could get a decent amount now uh when new characters are released I would either shoot for two targets either opening a certain amount of orbs maybe it's five orbs maybe it's ten orbs it's gonna be ten, depend on how many red star orbs you have or shoot for a certain star level if you have more orbs um you know with it, it's I, I would shoot for a target and hit the target maybe maybe um three stars or four stars for new characters five stars but um that yeah, shoot for a target and try to hit that but uh, stay within your budget don't go too crazy with all these new characters unless uh unless you get a, over an abundance of these red stars or you really really want that character but yeah save them save them for new characters that's that's what I used to do that's what I still do and that's what I recommend everyone doing for their red stars uh greetings from the Oregon coast I hope this find you well love your content have a question about effect timing what is the timing of effects it, it is inconsistent brother it is not it is not consistent across the board per character I think it changes per character as an example Taskmaster's uh basic at level six steals three positive effects level three ISO eight skirmisher clears one positive effect if the target is vulnerable which would happen first I'm reducing my own steal potentially if I did that valley flying keep on smash I am not exactly sure the order of uh that that's, this happens uh obviously yes that is that is very bad so maybe skirmisher on taskmaster may not be the best uh thing if it if it goes iso 8 and then stealing the positive effects uh if anybody knows in the comments let me know because i'm not exactly sure because i think it is pretty inconsistent it's uh it seems like it's on a character per character basis uh word up valley of lion kumasta kuma kumu kamustas from Philippines now that the lunar calendar is out and you need to spend at least 5,000 cores a day the question needs to be asked is there drug testing at Scopely headquarters not sure not even sure if they're working in the office right now they might all be working at home so uh yeah not sure I know you're generally concerned I, I know there's a lot of other members of the community that are very concerned as well what is going on at Scopely uh did they have sit in a room and brainstorm new was the new ways to upset the player base this core event is the worst event I think they have ever dropped yeah I, I think this is the worst event that I've probably had in mobile games now the newer version not as bad they're giving 100 cores per day if you're someone that doesn't spend a lot of cores uh obviously these questions were asked before the uh the slight change came because it is not 5,000 anymore it's the it's the cost of 3,000 so uh instead of spending insane 60 bucks per day to hit all the milestones you get to spend the insane 40 bucks per day to hit the milestones so much better but yeah the the rework of the milestones we have all the gear 14 mini uniques in the beginning we have some different uh pieces that are a little easier to hit like those uh promotion credits and things like that but yeah I don't know I don't know I guess it was for mega whales he said as uh, uh, cerebro said this event was only designed for a few players I, I don't know why they would design a or the top tier rewards were only designed for a few players so I don't know why they would design an event like that uh, especially in the current climate of the game right now uh valley flying I hope you're doing well my question is that since I mid game I've been looking at all these events some are being are being harder than others to do with incomplete roster and such Wait, were the events not meant for early mid game players to do like this lunar event is crazy so you need to spend 5,000 per course per day it's really daunting for me to even look at trying to spend so uh normally when I play games you got different events for newer players mid game players end game players and yeah I, sometimes it seems like that's lost a little bit uh in Marvel Strike Force obviously you got different orbs with this lunar event for depending what gear you need depending what level you're at but uh yeah this this is not a fun event uh, even though they reduced it to 3,000 even though they're giving us 100 cores per day which is nice um and then uh just changing the rewards it still still doesn't feel good and uh, I think my suggestion with this event just spend whatever you're going to spend on a normal basis you know don't spend more for this event if you're going to spend it then cool if you're going to spend it anyway cool 
if the event wasn't going on so that's uh, that didn't make sense but if you're if let me let me say that again all right uh if you were going to spend those cores even without this event going on then just spend it if you're going to save your cores if the event is going on then do that uh, and obviously work it out with your alliance because there's some pretty good rewards in the alliance section that you may want to talk to your alliance about before uh skipping it but yeah this this event is not cool it's not cool especially when you involve your whole alliance with power cores and all that uh, greetings from the snowy Scotland, brother. Greetings from snowy Texas, brother. I certainly wish I was back home in Liverpool at this time of the year. Anyway, my question. Currently, I have Symbiote Spider-Man, Ghost, Thanos, Mr. Sinister, Baron Zemo for DD4. Was thinking of going trait by trait. And having Emma Frost or X-23, a uh, bunch of red stars. Next Mutant, Anti-Venom for my next battle. Ebony Maw, Doctor Strange for my next Mutant, uh, for my next Mystic, excuse me. And Proximate Corvus for my next skills. The further beef up my ready beefy 700k black order any advice would be truly appreciated so what you're doing you're, you're focusing the traits which is good because that's what the uh uniques 15s are based off of but i would look at the traits so you look like you have enough to get in next is going to be global so you have uh ghost mr sinister and zemo you're gonna need one more uh global character and then you're gonna need some more cosmic characters uh you have thanos there for cosmic so i would focus on those sections because the next thing you're gonna run up the next roadblock is gonna be your global so next global is who i would focus on so maybe not corvus or proxima maybe a cheaper character like black widow she's she's not the best but she's pretty cheap uh, also for mutant i went saber tooth not because he's great but because he's cheap i'm gonna get into global uh quicker so uh that might be one strategy to do uh but i, I think i would prefer that going on what i'm gonna tackle next rather than what trait i need so uh that look look at it in that term i think i think it's gonna get you through dark dimension four a little quicker looking at like that uh, what is up, Valley, in the state that MSF is currently in? With uh, you being a great content creator primarily for this game, would you ever consider switching to a mobile, another mobile game as your main focus if Scopal Next keep breaking our heart over and over? Uh, I'm always looking for different mobile games to play. Uh, unfortunately, the only non-sponsored game that I'm playing right now is Marvel Strike Force. That's the only one that I've found fun so um if there's other games that you guys are having fun with let me know but i'm always looking for other games i want to cover stuff consistently on my second channel but nothing has appealed to me long enough to really make some good content like marvel strike force has even even uh this is such a fun game to cover guys because you know there's highs that is really fun there's lows and it's great to talk about like i, I think the game is kind of on a low right now but even with that there's still a lot of great stuff to cover but yeah uh, i'm always looking for other games brother uh, let me know if uh, if there's any good ones that you guys like. Let me know in the comments, guys. Uh, not a question, but this is the Ultimate 7 was when it first came out. Oh, I was wondering that on Friday when I was talking to Tony. I could not remember. All right. Uh, you got special currency in the Ultimate 6 final node, and you use that to do Ultimate 7. That is why we weren't running it uh, on a daily basis. All right. Two, two to three days, maybe times, uh, maybe times beaten with a better way to say it, uh, to get enough to do one yeah so i think we we were running it maybe every week or so I, I i can't remember off the top of my head maybe it was every every few days but yeah i just ultima 7 guys it's it was different and this uh doom raids seems like it's not as good as uh ultima 7 when it was released and it was kind of thrown upon us they built up ultima 7 like this is a new hard rate get your stuff you're not gonna be able to accomplish this super hard no 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 long build up for doom raids which is why it was so jarring when it came out like oh this is hard um hey valley finds green from slovakia in central europe me and my friend have been discussing Dr. Strange special T4 at level 6. Description says there's a 90% chance to flip all uh, positive effects at level 7. Always flip positive effects. Does the word always mean that it's definitive? Uh, not, not really. Uh, or the skill set depending on the focus of Dr. Strange and resistance of enemies. So it's a 90% chance to get that skill, that focus resistance check. Uh, when you put that T4 in, it's a 100% chance going to that uh, uh, focus and resistance check. Uh, yeah, 10% of chance, it's, it's just going to remove the debuffs and not do anything. And uh, the other percent of the time, it's going to do that. So, uh, yes, and uh, the, the comment down below says it means 100% chance to resist to try the focus resistance check and without it, it's a 90% chance so hopefully hopefully that made sense I don't know if it made sense the way I described it it made sense in my mind but ho hopefully that made sense but yeah it's focus and resistance is what uh, you're getting the focus and resistance check 
100% of the time is what you're getting with that T4. Uh, hey, Valley, hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy. Wanted to ask you about a few suggestions I have for the game, how we could push for these changes. Uh, first, they need to change the title of Battle Pass and Arena or in real-time arena it's a real-time arena pass so here, here's one of the things does when i talked to cerebro in the video i think he said they're already considering adding this for other game modes and not just battle pass obviously not the case in season three uh it looks like season four they're reverting the changes so quitting is not penalized so hopefully we'll see some other things like this extending this battle pass to other game modes because i think that's that's one of the big issues with uh the real-time arena right now then add a tier three battle pass i'd offer as gold shard experience boost on the nodes starting at ten dollars uh i think they should just add some experience boost more gold uh more training mats things like that but uh, if they did add that for 10 bucks i think people would buy that i think it would be pretty popular uh it's like a it's like a vip and that i've experienced in other games you get more stuff by spending this on a daily basis or we on monthly basis i think five bucks depending on the amount of experience shards gold that you could get i i think five bucks would be a better offer but i, I think i would like to see them do this especially for new, uh, older characters just boosting the shards just regardless so to help new players entice uh free to play players next i would add uh, character shards to the raid rewards like greek raids like call up sitting to alpha yo-yo to beta yeah so some of these unformal characters they should be there and remember they used to release characters via raids they don't do that anymore but it, it would be good uh ultimate raid add ultimate shards to the rewards double the rewards for each node in the raid i like the doubling the rewards i don't think ultimate shards does too much for people ultimus ultimus is not a great character ultimus is kind of a weak character so um i don't know if it's worth the investments uh i think at a higher level he's he can be used but uh you know to get him to that high level it takes a lot of resources and i don't know if he he's worth that investment this would go in helping alliances with raid participation uh possibly possibly not I, I i don't like the ultimate shards though for me the raids feels like a place to farm orbs uh not enough rewards uh for what you invest in i would get rid of the doom rays altogether and apologize i i don't know about that I, hard content is good i like chasing hard content doom raids i don't think is a problem the difficulty i i did have a problem if it was a limited time raid but it looks like it's permanent so i don't have, it gives me a goal to chase after if i'm if i'm beating every goal the game is easy i'm fully autoing everything what is the point of playing so i, I want to be able to chase something like the doom raids i want them to leave that in uh the rewards need to be adjusted the rewards are bad and uh other than that though i yeah i i, I some of the, the some of these that i like brother uh sub valley would you ever consider doing a large collab debate on discussion of uh top of uh, uh discussion of specific topics with four other content creators at the same time well we did we did three of us yesterday with myself omg and reminex and uh we there's there's discussion with five people or we we would talk about extending it to five people uh just got to make sure that technically it could all work out to make sure that uh cameras sound everything sounds good but that would be the only limiting factor and schedules because it, it took a little while for the three of us to schedule and having five people involved I, I don't know what it would be like to schedule that i think everyone together would be a great time bring a new uh, back and forth type of video you could bring once a week or a uh, bi-weekly I, I i think i yeah i three people maybe four total would work but uh yeah just, I, I want the sound and video to be good but it, it would be definitely fun um and then hopefully we could get something on a on a uh i i, I yeah I, I like doing it having something consistent would be good also do you know what happens when you pull a seven rest our dupe uh no what happens i i have not gotten one yet I, I i know it was written down a long time ago i can't remember what it said though i'm not sure if they gave you another seven star character or they gave a bunch of gold credits that you could up someone uh I, I think it might be gold credits but i'm not sure exactly how much six red star gives you currency to pull seven red star dupes what do seven red star dupes or is it not possible what do you always get the seven red star you need uh no yeah yeah you always get some start you need no I, I think it's gold promotion credits though i know it was written down a long time ago and i knew a long time ago but um yeah i'm not sure where to look my internet is down right now there's there's it's, it's snowy in texas things are haywire <laughs> all right but i started dd for a few days now and i'm on node 4 on global for some reason it won't let me enter it two of the five characters i got are t15 global will it not let me start all right so you need four per node uh i it's not like the other dark dimensions where you could go in one character or two character you need at least four per section so you need at least four global four cosmic 
four city and then four legendary to get to those sections uh yeah it's not like the other raids i thought it's not like the other dark dimensions i thought it was but uh yes you need need at least four so that's why you can't you need two more characters brother uh crazy three account guy just wanted to provide an update all right main account done with dd3 second account last city no third account been stuck damn you have three accounts almost in the same place that is crazy brother uh after a thousand days on my primary account uh finally pulled a seven red star it was yelena oh i guess uh congratulations or condolences for that uh seven red star yelena that's that's one that i pulled as well and i don't know what her value is right now uh especially that we're not able to farm gold stars for all these characters use my credits on sinister seven to sinister to allow uh to seven to wait for thanos to come around to seven him question for dd4 have thanos black widow getting ready working on ghost sinister symbiote spider-man to enter working on hawkeye as a fourth global do you uh strictly just uh do i strictly just focus on the next type of nodes working on characters yes so what right now i'm in global so right now i'm trying to build up my cosmic once i'm in cosmic i'm gonna work in my city once i'm in city then i'm gonna work in my legendaries and i'm gonna i'm gonna approach it like that because i think that's the quickest way to get through dark dimension because if if i spent all my resources on phoenix that's gonna delay whatever uh the next character that i could get up for the other nodes so i'm, I'm going in order i can level he hella and cosmic uh, and some other cosmic right now uh yeah if, if you're not close to cosmic though i would probably wait and use some of those resources on other characters that might potentially benefit you a lot uh make sure you check out that verandia spreadsheet yeah that uh i'll put a, i'll put a link to it in the comments it's a dd4 uh prep sheet to make sure you have all the gear and you can choose your characters and make sure you're doing it as efficiently as possible uh but yeah I, that's that's the way i do it i go no i go section per section uh what is up brother happy valentine's day today to me. happy valentine's day to you and the missus happy belated valentine's day to you as well brother uh question about the sinister six do you run the same lineup in all game modes or do you switch to certain characters for situations certain situations or in the same lineup in all game modes and that is probably the ideal lineup dark Ock, the two chargeables electro swarm and then mysterio and rhino that's that's who i use and i think that's the general consensus the best version uh you pull the seven red star vulture though realize i haven't worked on this team for a while i uh, want to know how to utilize him so and for that i think i think this team does have some flexibility because of the based on red stars the red stars that you're able to pull so for that i might replace rhino with vulture because your your vulture is super strong uh maybe mysterio but uh you definitely need doc Gawk and you definitely need two chargeables and then uh yes i think i think you have some flexibility with the last two characters based on the red stars that you were lucky enough to pull so you, i would bring bolter in and replace either rhino or mysterio and uh see who see who has uh the best the best uh ex has uh, what what word am i looking for who, who has the best results in battle uh oh my goodness another long one All right valley with this blog post update i'm glad they're addressing some of the problems in the game but as a free to play i feel like i have a lot of the time my voice doesn't matter and the whales that spend more money are the only voices that matter and i feel it's only small portion that play the game with that being said the best way for us free to play voices to be heard is to eliminate bo many bottlenecks in the game it isn't fair that we don't have a uh, get to play a character on a certain part of the game for multiple months after it's released due to lack of resources here's a list of bottlenecks that I have to deal with a daily basis so yeah a lot of bottlenecks in the game um I'm, I'm not sure what the what the feedback is i i heard they're taking a poll from uh the entire community even though the blog post indicated they're just released uh reaching out to certain levels uh, certain leaders of uh, alliances but i think they're polling the entire community uh and that is that is not uh scopely doing that i think that's the community doing it and post and giving their feedback to scopely i don't i don't think it's scopely reaching out to the players i think it's the players reaching out to themselves and providing that feedback so uh yeah provide your feedback as much as you can to scopely but uh, a lot of bottlenecks gold training modules purple and orange ability materials gold and purple uh materials sometimes you need blue uh blue definitely should be uh not a bottleneck anymore uh same thing with purple gear uh gold and purple gold gold gear is those t4s but uh, not the gear but the ability mass purple and orange ability mass the purple ability match should be very very frequent for character for players uh the t4s uh, i think that is the bottleneck that uh they should have training modules and gold i think should definitely be eased up a bit uh the gear i think the gold gear they want to they want it to remain exclusive as at least uh, in the blog post 
before but yeah the purple gear and blue gear should not be that much of an issue uh gear 13 14 and mini uniques you know i i think the the bottlenecks should be on the 14 and the 15s the 13s and the 15s though i think are the biggest bottlenecks for me the 14s they're farmable in the doom chapter so i don't think they're that big of bottlenecks since that got released but uh yeah the 13s and the 15s are the biggest bottlenecks for me red stars are just crap we definitely need way more promotion credits character shards i think that should be increased especially for older characters to help benefit new players uh iso ions is a big bottleneck with the ions brother and then the iso eight pieces yeah there's so many bottlenecks um i think if they reduce that number you're reducing gold training modules uh some of the ability mats especially the purple ones some of the gear uh red stars definitely easing up in that character shards for older characters definitely easing up on that but I, I think that would be proper but yeah there's a lot of bottlenecks in this game guys uh valley flying can you ex explain exactly how bleed works and what they're based on so right now my internet's not working because of i, I assume it's because of all the snow in texas but bleed is based on the damage of your current character or the character that applies the bleed so if you look at the damage that the bleeds are going to be based on that and then you got defense down and defense up that then factor into the equation as well and it's kind of like a damage over time so if you have a bunch of bleeds stacked during your character as soon as they take a turn they're going to take all of that damage they're not they're not taking it immediately like a normal damaging move bleeds are bleeds are kind of a slower effect and sometimes you have multiple stacks and multiple turns of bleeds so you might you might be getting a few turns that you're taking a bunch of damage so hopefully that helps but yeah the the big thing is based on is the damage of the character that applied the bleed uh greetings from the old red good old red river i have an idea of the other day i wanted to bounce off of you what if there's a trade up upgrade gear system for the gear like basic catalyst for example what if you had 100 blue we could trade it up for 10 purples or 10 orange uh yeah so this this was mentioned uh, and i think in a previous question i like this idea i don't know if it's very scopely friendly so i don't know if they're gonna if it, it gives them a lot of benefit to uh, invest in something like this but very very player friendly i would heavily be in favor of something like this uh hey valley obsessed with wandavision oh wandavision so if you haven't seen all the episodes of wandavision there may be spoilers in this uh question so close your ears if you haven't watched all those episodes and you want to watch them i was thinking of a new team that could come to the game westview tag scarlet witch vision quicksilver wicked speed vision is homeless and with more bs blade rumors i'm sure scarlet witch is replaceable on supernatural we haven't had an mcu tie-in since mysterio and the last spider-man movie i believe what are your thoughts on this new team i would like it and it, it gives vision a home it gives scarlet witch uh, hopefully it gives scarlet witch and vision more synergy because they have some real small synergy right now and and it doesn't really make sense to use them on a team together so i would like to see them going together quicksilver coming in the game i think would be a very popular choice and then obviously wiccan and speed maybe giving them that westview tag but i think they also should have dual tags with as young avengers and then maybe another character uh that has been in this series i don't want to mention too many I, i'm sure if you guys have seen the series you know uh who i'm talking about but there's a very prominent character in there that uh, could be added to the game as well because she's had multiple versions of her in the comics so i hope uh she comes to the game but yeah I, I like this idea it gives homeless characters a home uh hey valley had an idea for blitz i wanted to hear your opinion maybe if enough the community likes it the game enough traction to become reality the idea is this 48 hours for character blitzes instead of the current 72 hours this would add a third character blitz into a week which would provide an additional opportunity to have an older character blitz serving an additional catch-up mechanic for newer players uh so kind of like the last question i'm not sure if i want shorter blitzes i think multiple blitzes and blitz shards would be cool and then uh maybe maybe running some of these once in a while uh i know they used to do it with gear and certain things having these 24-hour blitzes when they don't have a character that can release uh I, I think giving players options more blitzes running concurrently i think would be would be would be good and then you know because if you if you wanted bishop this past week uh the only uh, you could blitz, blitz for bishop but if you're a newer player bishop's not really going to benefit you too much so having an older character blitz running concurrently i think uh would benefit a lot of uh newer and mid game players instead of just these newer characters that they can't really use right off the bat but uh i do i do feel that they should be able to unlock characters and uh play with them at least 
uh, to offset the cost of losing 24 hours. Points needed to progress to the milestone could be dropped to mirror the Red Stars Blitz. I also like the idea earlier of uh, having more milestones. I think uh, that that is a good idea as well. Veteran players could uh, clear them away. Rewards for each milestone at the end of the day. Spending 24 hours less on each new character blitz was heard. Hopefully, it would help reducing screen time. Uh, yeah, I think I think I think multiple blitzes would be a way to get more characters in there and uh, getting more players more character shards. But uh, I, I don't think I would be opposed to this. 24 uh, 48 hour blitzes instead of instead of 72 hour blitzes uh could 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 be good i mean uh i i unlike outside the box ideas this is something that they haven't done in the game yet so this could definitely test this and see what the reaction of the community is uh valley well uh, welcome well, warm welcomes from the a i hope you're talking about the atl um so my tcp is nine million and just unlocked jubilee five star minimum spend do uh do the gold bottleneck and i got her amazing t6 level 50 totally usable have scopely responded to you and your other kind of creators about gold and other bottlenecks maybe fewer character releases per month so uh they have not responded to us other than what they've released publicly not a lot of communication since uh the community started being uh angry started getting angry and angry about the current state of the game but and i think it came from that last release i think a lot of it I think a lot of us, uh, a lot of players, including myself, was uh, looking forward to the update, seeing what changes we could possibly get in this update, and just a lot of disappointment with this update coming. Uh, the Doom Raids, the the reverse, the, the changes that make real-time arena harder, uh, the 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 uh, recommending of six red stars for these Doom Raids. I think uh, yeah, the, not, not a lot of communication since this update, except the public stuff, so... Um, unfortunately that's that's what we got in so far uh happy valentine's day actually did i skip a question no i didn't okay happy valentine's day brother love uh one love brother not sure if this has been asked before but any word on stark tech level is going to be increased uh, my stockpile is not doing you any favor sitting and collecting dust so when i oh good luck in your tournament next week <laughs> thank you brother um anyway that not not uh, from what i've talked to cerebral it doesn't look like this is anything uh in the near horizon so within the next few months it may be down the road but nothing i wouldn't expect this anytime soon uh what i'm using for my stark i guess it's the alliance currency i can't remember what it's called off the top of my head but what i'm using that for once uh, most of the time i'm using it for those elite war credits so i could buy that orb and get some of uh, the t15 uniques that i need to get into dark dimension uh, if you're needing more of the character shards and want to select your gear 15 or potentially gear 15 or maybe even other gear that you're looking for other uh, <clears throat> other characters to get into different levels, uh, get those normal war credits. And then if you want those elite four red star orbs, then there's, those are there as well. I, I think for me, the best value is those uh, elite war credits. So that's what I'm spending my money on. But I don't, I don't know if the Stark Tech is going to be upgraded anytime soon uh oh my goodness long question again greetings from israel all members of the game have acknowledged the current blitz two shard system one shard for first 90 day players and other shard for everyone else is ridiculous a 200 day player isn't completing the same blitz he's spectating i can understand the change in the current system adding new shards might be difficult and require many workouts so here's my solution instead of more bullet shards more bullets uh, we always wanted multiple characters at the same time. For example, we had the Bliss, uh, Bishop Blitz. We had at the same time, we have an older character like Vision. Yeah, I, it's, I like this. I mean, this has been something that's mentioned uh, for a while. I think Contest of Champions has been doing this for a while. Uh, I would like to see this. I mean, this, this has been suggested to the folks at Scopely for a long time. They have not implemented it. The technology is there because they are able to do the Red Star and the Premium More Blitz uh, concurrently. Uh, newer players will they get the milestones for bishop and then go hard for vision i i think that's what they should do advanced players won't bother with a vision bliss and allow new players to truly compete for the good rewards this this could be a good solution in addition to shards i mean the shards are already in the game at an arena multiple blitzes already in the uh, game with the red star and the orb blitz i mean all the stuff they can do um and then even switching of the days because they've done 24 hour blitzes before so all of these suggestions for blitz they have this technology i don't think it will it will make too much maybe it will i'm not a dev but uh, just it seems like it's in the game it seems like it would be a uh, solution uh next question yo valley love and wishes from the uk specifically wales not england i was watching gardens of the galaxy 2 or the other night it provided me with a few thoughts 
when are we getting taser face i i think it's unlikely that we're getting taser face at this point uh maybe when it ties into a more guardians of the galaxy 3 or when that's a little more on the horizon but uh, a lot of people saying uh, ravager bruiser looks a lot like taser face of some slight differences but uh, there's a lot of similarities why did yandu not get an ability referencing mary poppins maybe maybe they developed him way back before guardians of the galaxy uh, 2 was released i don't know but uh, yeah, sometimes they get creative, sometimes not as creative. If Yandu was a Kree slave, could this not give him a Kree tag? Just a different opinion. I guess I guess if Captain Marvel has a Kree tag uh, and Yandu was a Kree slave, uh, you could give him a Kree tag as well. But he was a very early on character that uh, you could make the argument. Could have the hero and villains tag and the Ravager and Guardians tag. That's, that's what I really want to see with Yandu. And if you give him a Kree tag, then even better. Uh, the biggest idea, how about having Ego as a legendary with Guardians and Star-Lord being the requirements to give him the most relevance again? Uh, I think I think you've got a couple different options. You could you could give Yondu that Guardian tag and give him a rework, make him viable with the Guardians. You could also make that argument from Nebula based on what happened in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I think as far as a big legendary though, I think the I think Adam Warlock would be the most uh likely based on him them teasing him pretty hard in guardians of the galaxy 2 towards the end uh rumors that he's in guardians of the galaxy 3 so i think that would be more likely than ego but uh that, again it, it seems some of the stuff seems totally random that scopely does so who knows what's gonna happen uh this is my second time asking a question for the mailbag and i want to say thank you for answering my question last week really like hearing your input i really like the video overall thank you for spending time to answer the questions every week love the videos keep up the amazing work now now onto the question all right but well, thank you guys thank you guys for watching and thank you all of you guys that submit questions uh i wait where's the question uh oh there we go i have tunes a uh, sinister 16 but i don't know who to use my fifth on that team uh maybe should be i know i should have electro swarm rhino mysterio just wondering who the tune from the sinister six should be so i guess you're not having doc Ock if you don't have if you're not uh, mentioning in this question uh i i guess the one you have the highest red stars on vulture has a pretty good kit uh green goblin is okay i like his buff removal but is is the rest of his kit is not that solid uh shocker i don't know if he provides enough with his offense up so i think i'm gonna get i'm gonna think i'm gonna go vulture here for the fifth but uh just I, it may it probably is going to be depending on your red stars uh valley keep up the great work just an idea there's only one orb farmable character in the game um, in my opinion and that's ultimus because his orb will always give you ultimus fragments please talk to scopely that the only way to make a character farmable they could do the same with domino and blitz orbs and symbiote spider-man into milestone orbs side pillars give at least one fragment and premium orb that's a mess can't figure it out but two percent is trash should be at least ten percent or something ultimate orbs have been trashed for a while ultimate is not a great character like i said he can be at high levels but i don't know if he's worth that investment on the is he, i don't know if he's going to give you a good return on your investment of all the resources you would have to spend to build them up so uh yeah i i, I kind of like this idea the blitz orbs are crap the the milestone orbs are decent but they're a crap way of getting shards for symbiote spider-man so uh making making a guaranteed for this would be be a little less painful when you're trying to get shards for a certain character i agree uh as of february 2021 you can rank your legendaries in my opinion oh this this might be a whole video uh i i'll rank the top and the high so the top i think for me based on my usage and I, this is not necessarily this is the best but uh, based on how often i'm using this character top is gonna be ebony ma bottom is probably everybody's bottom the iron man uh any as someone who's just unlocked dog dog and jubilee trying to see who should get the loving first well i guess it's going to be based on usability are you going to be using your sinister six more more of a war team if you're placing more off uh emphasis on war in your alliance then probably want to go doc ock because he's probably a little better on war jubilee very good character and i guess some of that is going to be dependent on the rest of your astonishing x-men no ways to get shards for the rest of the astonishing x-men which is the which is the trouble with that team right now no way to get the gold stars for that team so uh based on that it might be doc ock but jubilee they're they're gonna be a dominant team in the raids and they also are able to do very well in war so uh if if both teams were farmable i would definitely say axemen but i might go doc ock just for now it, just based on the fact that the sinister six is farmable and the axemen are not but i think the axemen are a better team 
if you ever if you have decent sh uh, stars, gold stars on Bishop, Iceman, uh, uh, Kitty Pride, and Beast, then maybe maybe Jubilee, because even at lower levels, they're pretty good in the raids. Uh, hey, Valley Greens from South Carolina. Hope you and your family are having a great day. Same to you, brother. Uh, was wanting to hear your opinion. With such a high demand for years now, it feels like Scopely has been reserving Gambit for a community-pleasing emergency and using we have all the time in the world to release fan favorite characters because this game could go on for years and not cover to release them. My question isn't, with all the unrest community, do you think they would release them soon? But rather, with the years of delays now, power creep growing, how ungodly overpowered will he have to be to not be a disappointment? I think he, he whatever the current meta is, whenever he's released, I think he just has to be a part of that or relevant to the current meta. Uh, it's hard to say right now uh, because, you know, the meta right now is Black Order. Who knows what it's going to be when Gambit is going to be released. But as long as he fits in there and can counter or is a part of a counter to some of the meta teams, I don't think him alone is going to be able to do this stuff. And I don't think he should. I think he's going to be part of a team that could counter Black Order or someone. Uh, I, I don't think solo beating the Black Order would be appropriate unless, unless, unless it's way down the road and the Black Order is super out of the meta at that point I, I don't think it would be appropriate for one brand new character to beat beat the black order given given all the resources that uh, most players have invested into the black order uh what are your ideas as kit may look like i mean uh as far as kitty they could go any direction i think it would be a blaster though obviously a mutant yeah fitting on multiple teams uh multiple x-men teams and uh yeah other than that uh we'll see what as far as uh a letdown as, as long as he competes what in whatever the meta is I don't, I don't think he'll be that much of a letdown uh hey valley hope you're good not a question but i want scopely to create a fan favorite team since three fan favorites are currently bad wolverine spider-man iron man and find two other tunes that fit well with them it would make so many people happy so I, I i like that team that was mentioned earlier with uh the jessica jones luke cage iron fist spider-man and wolverine and then there's a few other characters but i like that team so uh yes make them make them usable give these characters a home is what i would want and that is about it for this video guys thank you everybody each and every one of you that submitted a question whether it got answered or not uh yes apologize about the stream this morning because the internet is down and it's still down as of me recording this uh hopefully i could upload this video later and give you guys the mailbag but uh as soon as the internet comes up this video will be uploaded i will see you guys next time though hopefully everything is back to normal if it is i will see you on stream tomorrow and uh yes we can record the news video but if not uh continue to subscribe because we're, we're we got more videos coming hit that notification bell as well check me out on social media check out some of my other videos before you go and give me a fist bump baby